Chapter 6 All around Millie, neighbors were gathered in her backyard for the courtly housewarming party. Wow, there are so many people. We haven't even been here a week, and it's like the whole town is here. Tables were set up all around the yard. Some for sitting, others filled with snacks and drinks. Mom reached for a cookie, but was interrupted by Mom. Millie, honey! Don't fill up on sweets. Your father's almost done with the burgers. Next to Mom were Miss Richards and a chubby man wearing a Hawaiian shirt, with a small dog sitting next to him on a leash. Hi, Millie, said Miss Richards, waving. So that's Millie, the man said. Hi there, young lady. My name's Mr. Norton, and this here's Pepper. The dog stood on all fours at the mention of its name, as soon as Millie knelt down to pet it, it wagged its tail, leapt up on its hind legs, and licked Millie's cheek. She couldn't help but laugh. It tickled so much. He's a little ball of energy, this one, Mr. Norton said. He just loves meeting new people. Oh, hey, Stacy, Mom said to Miss Richards. Do you know if the Jenkinsons are coming? Miss Richards scanned the backyard. I don't see them. They must be running late. They promised they'd stop by. Well, I hope they get here soon, Mom said. Then to Millie, she added, I think you'll like them, Millie. They have a daughter who's around Sasha's age and a son close to Jeff's age. Really? They sound cool. I can't wait till they get here. I want to meet all the neighbor kids. Speaking of your brother and sister, Mom continued, do you know where they are? Millie looked and saw Jeff sitting at the wooden picnic table that came with the house. A little boy with glasses was standing near him. Jeff's over there. I don't know where Sasha is. Well, make sure to tell him not to eat too many snacks before lunch is ready. Especially Jeff. Okay, Mom. Bye, everybody. Millie left the group. Disappointed, she couldn't get dessert, and joined her brother at the picnic table. He had a plate of cheese and crackers in front of him. He just stared straight ahead, with his elbow on the table while feeding himself with one hand. The glasses-wearing boy, who looked younger than Millie, continued to stand there, not bothering to sit down. You like fishing? Millie heard him ask as she got closer. No, replied Jeff putting another cracker in his mouth. My dad takes me fishing at the river sometimes. We have to toss them back, though, because they're too small. That sounds like fun, Millie said, sitting across from her brother. My name's Millie. What's yours? Millie, don't encourage him, Jeff said. He'll be yapping for hours. The boy gave a slight jolt. Oh, okay, then. He started to back away glancing over his shoulder towards the house. I should probably go see what my mom's up to. Well, I'll see you around. Millie watched him disappear into the crowd, disappointed the conversation was over so soon. You shouldn't be mean to our neighbors, she scolded her brother. These kids might be our only friends. Jeff ate another piece of cheese. A friend like that? No thanks. Millie groaned. Well, anyway, Mom said not to fill up on snacks before lunch. I'm sure she did. He continued to pick each piece off his plate, one at a time. Millie looked in the direction the little boy left. I wish he was still here. He seems nice. I want to hang out with him some more. If only Jeff hadn't scared him off. So, this is where you've been all this time, huh, Jeff? said Sasha, approaching them with a can of soda in her hand. No, said Jeff. I went inside for a little while to watch TV, but Dad came in and dragged me back out. Sasha laughed. A gesture Millie couldn't help but copy. Well, serves you right, said Sasha. Wouldn't kill you to socialize a little. You're one to talk. I haven't exactly seen you lining up to shake hands with these people yet. Yeah, well, that's only because it's mostly adults here. 
I mean, maybe if they were closer to my age. My point exactly. Just because I have to share a neighborhood with these people doesn't mean I have to be friends with them. I think they're neat, said Millie. I both pity and envy you, Mill, said Jeff. Sasha sighed. Stubborn as always. When you become so accepting? I haven't, Sasha insisted. Look, I still miss our old life, too, but, well, sulking around isn't going to do much good now. Like it or not, we're here for a long time. Jeff looked away, resting his cheek on his hand. That sounds like something Mom or Dad would say. Come on, Jeff. At least try to be happy. That way, at least one of us is. Jeff didn't look at Sasha. He just stared off into space, finishing the rest of his plate. Sasha sighed, shook her head, and walked away. Millie hoped Jeff would start talking to her again, but he seemed lost in his own little world. His attention was fixed on the table with the cheese and crackers, and Millie knew he was thinking about going back for more. Which reminds me... She looked over and saw the dessert table was completely unguarded. Mom, Miss Richards, and Mr. Norton appeared to have gone somewhere else. Now's my chance! Millie crept carefully over, making sure not to draw too much attention to herself. She used a napkin to grab a chocolate chip cookie from the pile, then scanned the table from one end to the other. In addition to cookies, there are also brownies, cupcakes, mini eclairs, cream puffs, even a large cake with chocolate frosting and the word welcome written in blue. Millie looked back to make sure she wasn't being watched. Maybe a few eclairs won't hurt. She scooped three onto her plate, putting a fourth into her mouth. Mmm, delicious! She decided to add a cupcake with blue frosting. As she picked up her plate and started back towards her table, she took one last look at the cake. That looks amazing. Too bad I can't have any right now. And then, BAM! Millie was knocked to the ground. She rubbed her hurting forehead and saw her plate and most of its contents spilled on the grass. She looked up at a blonde girl, about Sasha's age. Smack dab in the middle of her red shirt were two squash declares and a smear of blue frosting. Oh no. Ugh. Look what you've done, the girl said. With a disgusted look on her face, she picked the declares off her and threw them to the ground. I'm really, really sorry, Millie said. Sorry? the blonde girl replied. You know how much this thing cost? A blonde boy, close to Jeff's age, walked up behind her, putting his hand on her shoulder. Hey, Clarice, what's going on? Clarice pointed to the chocolate, cream, and frosting left over. Look what she did to my blouse, Marcus. It's really not that bad, Millie said. You could probably get that out easily. Here, let me help. She licked her thumb and started to rub at one of the stains, the way Mom did all the time with her. Clarice quickly pulled away from her. Stop it! You're making it worse. She smoothed out her blouse and groaned as she inspected it. Looking at the stains suddenly reminded Millie of the time she went to the zoo with her family. They stopped at one of the picnic tables for lunch. Dad sat down without realizing someone left a half-melted ice cream cone at his spot. It wasn't until after he got up to leave that Mom pointed it out. Everyone at the table laughed because it looked like Dad pooped his pants. Millie snickered with a memory now fresh in her mind. What, you think this is funny? Clarice barked. N no, Millie replied, trying to keep her mouth from bursting wide open. I just thought of... She knew she'd be in bigger trouble if she didn't stop, but she just couldn't get the image of Dad out of her mind. I'll show you funny! Clarice reached forward and grabbed Millie by one of her pigtails. Pain shot through Millie's head, and whatever urge she had to laugh was gone now. Dropping to her knees, she looked around for a grown-up and opened her mouth to yell. But Clarice immediately put her hand over it. Make a noise and you're dead! You hear me? 
What do you want to do with her? Marcus asked. For starters, let's smush some of those eclairs on her face. Clarice nodded over to the ones in the grass. We'll see how she likes being messed up. Ow! Please stop! Millie begged. I said be quiet! Clarice hissed. Leave her alone, said Jeff. Millie looked up the seam standing in front of them, glaring at Marcus and Clarice. She remembered what he said to her the night they moved in. Clarice laughed. <laughs> What's it to you? I'm her brother, that's what. He stepped forward and gave her a hard shove, causing her to stumble back a few inches and let go of Millie. Hey, don't push my sister, Marcus said. Yeah, I'm a girl, Clarice whimpered. You can't hit me. I don't care, Jeff snapped. You mess with my little sister, you pay. I've never seen him this mad, not even with Sasha. This could get ugly. What's going on here, said Dad. Millie turned around to see him join the commotion, with Sasha by his side. You went and got Dad, Jeff whispered angrily. I had to make sure you didn't do anything stupid, Sasha replied. I'll ask again, said Dad. What's going on here? Jeff pointed. They started it. Clarice pointed back at him and started bawling. He pushed me. You were pulling Millie's hair. Marcus joined in. He's lying. Jeff grabbed Marcus. You want a piece of me? Before Millie could even blink, the two boys stumbled back into the dessert table. Oh, no. Millie heard murmurs and whispers coming from behind her. Looking back, she saw that practically everyone at the party was watching the scuffle. Mom stared on in horror, and next to her, Miss Richards had her hand over her mouth. Millie turned back to the fight just in time to see Marcus throw a handful of cookies at Jeff, who, in return, pushed Marcus' face right into the cake. Dad rushed in to separate the boys, but not before the table tipped and fell over, showering Jeff and Marcus with the rest of the sweets like a sugar waterfall. After a bit of struggling, Dad managed to pry Jeff away. Enough, he said. Knock it off. What's gotten into you? A man and a woman ran over to Marcus, who sat up sniffling and wiping the frosting off his face. Marcus, said the woman. Marcus, are you all right? Here. She began dabbing his face with a napkin. The man looked angrily at Jeff. Young man, you have a lot of explaining to do. Oh, don't worry, said Dad. I'll handle this. Come on, Jeff. He led Jeff over to the patio doors and into the house. I gotta see this, Sasha said, following after them. Millie ran close behind. Sorry about that, Mom said to the crowd. You know how boys can get sometimes. Soon the entire family was in the kitchen. Jeff sat at the table, looking down at the floor, with his arms crossed while Dan stood in front of him. Sasha took a spot near the sink, a safe enough distance to hear what was about to come. Mom closed the patio doors behind her and leaned against them, looking embarrassed. Millie, afraid of what was going to happen next, stood next to the island. This is bad, really bad. What were you thinking back there? Dad scolded. He and Mom towered over Jeff like tall buildings. Jeff didn't look at either of them. He just continued to stare at the floor. It wasn't my fault. They were hurting Millie, pulling her hair and everything. Dad turned to Millie. Is this true? She suddenly found herself looking at the floor as well. Y yes, she replied nervously. Are you all right? Millie nodded. Please, don't be too hard on Jeff. She sniffed in order to keep her tears in. I was... he was just trying to help. I understand, sweetie, but we have to set an example, Dad said. Fighting is not an acceptable solution. I thought we taught you kids better than that. Especially in front of our new neighbors, Mom added. We have to see those people every day. What if those parents press charges against us? I've never been so embarrassed in my entire life. She put her hand to her head as if she had a headache. For all Millie knew, she probably did. Millie saw that Jeff looked less angry and more sad. 
Maybe he was starting to realize what he was in for, or maybe he wished he hadn't acted out. Poor Jeff. I could have handled it by myself if Sasha hadn't butted in, he said. Oh no, Sasha said, you are not dragging me into this. I went and got Dad because I knew something like this would happen. Jeff glared at her. Well, excuse me for being concerned about my little sister. Someone has to. I care, too. The difference is I actually think before I act. Unlike some people. Enough, both of you, Dad said. Sasha, you did the right thing getting an adult. Jeff, you need to learn there are better ways to handle a situation. We're going back out there, and you will apologize in front of everyone. Jeff sprang up. Apologize? No way. Well, then go straight to your room for the rest of the day, Mom said. We'll think of a punishment later. So what? Like there's anything to do in this stupid town anyway. I'd rather stay in my room for a year than apologize to those jerks. Jeff shot an angry glance in Sasha's direction as he stormed out of the kitchen. Think about what you're doing, young man, Dad said. You're only making this worse for yourself. You sure you don't want to talk about this? Positive, was Jeff's immediate response. Millie watched as he went right past her toward the stairs. She wanted to say something, but no words came to mind. She just let him go on his way, his footsteps sounding like explosions as he went up each stair. Mom sighed. What on earth are we going to do with him? Forget him, Sasha said. Let him sulk. She opened the patio door and stepped back outside. Dad looked at Mom. She has a point. We can't let him ruin our party any more than he already has. He followed Sasha out to the backyard. Sorry about that, Millie heard him say to the crowd outside. Who's hungry? Mom leaned in toward Millie. Maybe you should stay close to me so you don't have another run-in with any of the neighbor kids, okay? Okay, Millie replied. She followed her mom to the doors, but stopped and turned to look down the hall toward the staircase. Millie, Mom called from the other side of the doorway. She motioned for her to come outside. Millie looked out to the doorway, checking the backyard for Marcus and Clarice, but didn't see them anywhere. They must have left already. Even though she was relieved, she stayed close to Mom, keeping her eyes peeled and not even bothering to talk to any of the other kids. Sasha came over and patted her on the shoulder. How you doing? Uh, just fine. Millie looked around the backyard for what felt like a millionth time. You still worried about Marcus and Clarice? Sasha said. They're long gone from the looks of it. I guess Jeff scared them away. Millie nodded. You and Jeff shouldn't fight so much. He was only trying to help. Sasha sighed. Yeah, that's what bothers me most. I swear, he's got to start thinking before he acts. It's like puberty hit him early and hard. Peanut buttery? Sasha laughed. No, puberty. It's when you... She paused. Eh, you'll find out when you're older. Before long, Dad announced the burgers and hot dogs were ready, inviting everyone to get a plate. Even as Millie ate, her thoughts still went back to Jeff, as she found herself glancing up every so often at the second floor of the house. If I hadn't tried to grab all those sweets, Jeff wouldn't have had to help me in the first place. I have to find some way to thank him. What if I brought him some food? Yeah, I'll do that. She quickly finished off what was left of her food, then went back to the serving table and put together a new plate for her brother. She put on whatever she thought he'd like. A cheeseburger, potato chips, a pickle, even some of that cheesy potato salad Miss Richards brought. It was all kind of heavy, and Millie was afraid she'd drop it, so she put a second plate ups upside down over it to cover it up. It looked kind of like a flying saucer. After stuffing a fork and napkin in her pocket, Millie headed for the patio doors, once again making sure she wasn't being watched. Luckily, Mom and Dad were busy eating, standing talking to one of the neighbors Millie didn't know yet. 
She made sure to grab a can of soda from the cooler, tucking it under her arm, even though it was freezing cold. Once inside, she carefully made her way up the stairs. She was relieved to finally make it to Jeff's door. She set the food and soda down by her feet and knocked. Jeff, it's me. I got some food for you. One sec, he answered. Seconds later, he opened the door. Millie saw the light wasn't even on in this room. It was dim except for whatever was pouring into the window. She picked up the tray of plates and handed it to him. I thought you might be hungry. If you want more, I can go back down. Jeff took the top plate off and looked at the food. You carried this all the way upstairs? Millie nodded. I wanted to thank you for standing up for me. It's my fault you're up here, after all. I mean, I shouldn't have been even been near the dessert table. What are you talking about? It ain't your fault. Don't be ridiculous. I'm always happy to help my little sis. Speaking of which, those kids aren't giving you any more trouble, are they? No, they left while we were all inside. Bunch of cowards, Jeff mumbled under his breath, just loud enough for Millie to hear. Well, thank you very much. You're welcome. Oh, wait, I almost forgot. She took the fork and napkin out of her pocket and handed them, along with the soda can, to Jeff. Careful, I dropped the soda on my way up here. Okay, I'll just set that aside for now. Millie watched as her brother ate happily. He even offered her some, but she politely refused. She just stood by the door and waited. It's good to see him happy again. You know what? He said once he was finished. I think I will go join everyone outside. Millie felt her face fill up with joy. Really? Yeah, I figure a little apology. Plus, maybe Mom and Dad give me chores for a week or so. Nothing too bad. Marcus and Clarice may have won this round, but we'll show them. He patted Millie's head like a kitten. Thanks for being on my side. Thank you, she replied. Jeff gathered all the garbage and they walked back downstairs together.